So welcome everybody. I'm thrilled to share with you what has been such a passion for me all these years. I've really had a love affair with nature that was for the most part very private. And in a sense, doing this tonight is coming public with this love affair. I I have cherished the times, the very quiet times I've had in nature, in my garden particularly. Really working with the spirit of the plants, the spirit of the place, and um, listening for guidance. And that's really opened my soul, opened my heart, um, taken me deeply into the mystery. And I had no intention when I was making the original flower essences starting in 1995 that this would end up being a divinatory resource for people. That didn't happen until about 10 years later when I was doing a reprint of the Essence Manual. And I went back into meditation and connected with the spirit of Raven Essences, which was how I worked with the project all through the years, and asked, what is this manual for? And we think, what is this for? And I heard it's to be a divinatory resource. And I was like, whoa, that's really neat. Because I loved working with the tarot, the runes, and particularly the I Ching. And to think that the manual, which had um, maybe about 300 essences at that time, could work in that capacity, separate from the flower essences themselves, was very exciting. So I took the new manual and traveled around to about um, six different cities in Ontario and held small group gatherings where I played with people to show them how this could work with the questions, some of the questions that I've sent to you. And after that tour, I was absolutely convinced that this was a real um, possibility that people could work with. So I've quietly worked with this on my own with my clients. And even tonight when I was preparing and sitting, just meditating and being quiet before everybody gathered, I asked myself the question, what is my right attitude? What attitude should I be assuming in this evening? Tested for the essence. And it was the one called the hearth, which is the heart essence, one of the heart essences. So I knew I just had to speak from my heart and that was all I had to do this evening. So that's what I'm looking forward to doing with you tonight. So we're going to explore how you can use the website because all the essence definitions are published in there and how you can use this yourself and navigate to find what you need for wisdom tips. So I'll open, dive right in and bring up the Raven Essence website here. And you would come to the home page here and then click on buy online. That takes us to the online store. And in here, the three areas that we'll be primarily working in are the single flower essence defini definitions here, the Raven Essence kits, and the practitioner essences. So I thought what would be fun would be to play with this with you and ask you to put in the chat box one of your favorite flowers. So if you could take um, a moment and just put something in the chat box, you'll see it up this, on the little dots at the top or the bottom of your screen, and you can open up the chat box there. And Okay, what do we have here? Lavender, and I do not have a lavender essence, so somebody will have to come up with something else. Roses, orchids, lilies, yes, all right. Well, let's go with some of these, thank you. Okay, close the chat box now and um, so click on the single flower essence essences here and 
you'll see what that opens up are alphabetical lists. I'm going to go for orchid. And that's a particularly beautiful essence because, oh, come on, let's give me O here. I asked once, what is the key essence in the whole of the Raven Essence system? What is it that defines everything that we're about? And it turned out that it was the orchid. So um, you'll see with the essence, you get a picture and you get the phrase here, feminine flesh. That is sort of the essence of the essence. Under that is the uh, Latin name and then um, the family that it comes from and sometimes the common name, moth orchid. So I'm going to read this. A radiant moon-faced flower, orchid aligns our cellular energy with Mother Earth. The essence restores the full frequency of the sacred feminine. Centuries of abuse of women causes us to disdain our bodies. The split between mind and body cuts us off from the healing power of our sexuality and also from the energies of Mother Earth. Orchid encourages the restoration and differentiation of this energy by reinforcing the pure, delicate strength within female flesh. The DNA of female flesh resonates at a different frequency than the masculine. As feminine energy is enlivened in both men and women, we all become more whole, and Mother Earth has room to articulate herself through our bodies. Wow, we really nailed it with that one this evening. So then you have the color of the flower that I made the essence from, and being a musician, I also listened beyond just words for with the single essences. What would be the musical expression? Um, and in this one, it's that deep sound. So that's orchid. Um, if another way to use the single flower essences are if you have a dream and there's a significant flower shows up, you could go in and look and see if the meaning of the flower is there. And that would give you also a clue about um, your dream. I think gardeners too, who appreciate um, plants and have a particular resonance with a certain plant that they're growing, if they can um, look up the definition, it only deepens their resonance with, with that. So that's the single flower essences, and there's plenty to dive in around there. You'll enjoy exploring that. But these are not the, the essences that tend to come up when I'm testing for myself or for clients. They were the backbone of the original project because they learning to focus on a particular plant is very, very specific. It revealed itself through its colors, its expression, the way it grew, etc. And that's where the primary intimacy for me developed with those plants. But it wasn't until I started to make the Raven Essence kits that the project became more complex. So we're going to move into these right now. I'll give you a little tour of the, of the Raven Essence kits. There are quite a number of them and they're themed. Um, they were made over many years and um, sometimes one kit would take over a year to work on it, like the Destiny kit. So I'm just going to go into the Destiny kit and show you the different layers to it. Um, there would be a definition of the overall kit, like this in the first paragraph here. And then many of the kits have a booklet that goes with it. So you could click on the book at booklet and you can download this if you like. And it would have, this one is a huge one because it has the definitions, meditations on destiny, um, lots of different ways of working with the essences and then you come in and read all of that so some of the um 
Some of the kits are quite complex and others are relatively simple. Look at the Dream Quest kit here. And again, there's a brief definition of the whole kit at the beginning. There's a booklet, but there's also a slideshow here. So if you clicked on this, it would take you to the YouTube slideshow and you could watch that. This is about four minutes or so of um, illustrations of that. When you're actually testing though, what you would do is open up the um, Dream Quest kit and you wouldn't go to the first one, this. This is the whole kit, purchasing the whole kit. But you would test, is it in, is it in the Dream Quest kit? And then you could scroll down here and say, it's not the communicator, the East Keeper. Oh, it's the storyteller. And when you click on that, come on, storyteller, there comes up the definition. Now notice here, when I spoke about the degree of complexity in each one, this has some single flowers, the phlox, calla lily, stalk, crab apple, and then combinations. Georgian Bay is a combination. Cardinal flower is a sig signal, a simple one. The whole combination of fibromyalgia, candida, antique pink, and cedar is a single one. So you real start to realize that in one essence, like the storyteller, there may be over 50 actual essences, single essences that go to make up this one. And then there's the definition, of course. So um, let's go now to the practitioner essences. You see over here, I'm just going to press the button. I'll actually go up and close the single, the Raven kits, and now we're into the practitioner essences. These are made for pra holistic practitioners who wanted me to create things for their clients. That was an interesting challenge for me because um, they came with their own approach to working on healing, and I was to create something for their creative field that was different than a more my own creative field of just listening and what I wanted to do. And so I had to listen to their intention, what they wanted the essences for, and then I had to um, tune in and sense their creative field of the clients that they were working with. So there are many different um, practitioners here. Um, one was an acupuncturist, another one was working with um, holotrophic breath work. Someone else was working with prem, uh, Premi babies, um, a psychotherapist, uh, another woman doing spiritual healing. So the variety of, of challenges that I worked with was very exciting and, and interesting for me to do. I had to listen for language that would suit their, their community. And these tend to be, the practitioner essences, tend to be the ones that come up most in the testing right now. Those and the kits. So um, at this point, I think what might be interesting is to dive in and show you how we can do testing. So I'd like a volunteer, if one of you could indicate in the chat box that you're willing to be a volunteer, I'll just ask the simple question, what wisdom do you need right now? And we'll go through the process of finding this. So um, do I have a volunteer? If you could just let me know in the chat box, here we go. Um, Linda, thank you. Okay, Linda, I assume I have your permission to test for you. So I will just ask, um, what wisdom does Linda need now for, um, for insights for herself? What wisdom does Linda need now? 
I'm going to be using muscle testing and I'll show you later how I do this. But for now, I'm just going to dive in and do it and you'll see where I go on the screen. Is it in the single essences? No. Is it in the raven kits? No. Is it in the practitioner essences? Yes, so we'll open that up. Now I'm going to just, um, is it in the first four? No. In the Punta Serena ones? No. In the reality shift? Yes. Reality shift essences part one? Yes, so we'll open that up. And here we have, is it in the first three? In the second three, facing our shadows, honoring our deepest longing. All right. So here we have this. Now, I'm going to read this aloud, but what I would like, Linda, is if you could um, maybe unmute yourself after I've read this and tell us whether it does resonate with you and maybe what particular phrase stands out that is important for you at this time. So, the wisdom that you are calling for now says, our deepest longing is to be able to express the fullness of our radiance during our time on earth. Our destiny is to actualize our gifts and unique qualities of being within the web of life on this beautiful planet. This essence affirms our right to let the light we embody within us be vibrantly radiant in our worlds. Any residual fear, self-judgment or shame associated with being a beacon of light and love gently dissolve as we feel the soul of the world calling forth our radiance for the blessing of all creation. So Linda, if you wouldn't mind to just unmute yourself and just speak about whether that um, whether that resonates with you. Um, well, absolutely. How could it not? I think um, it's probably safe to say that universally we all want to be seen and experience life to the fullest. Are we ready for that? I think a lot of times we block it and uh, I probably have tended to do that a lot throughout my life. I'll, do a little bunny hop and then block and then those are little bunny hop and block again. Um, but in uh, honoring ourselves, which that seems part of what this as an essence speaks about, um, it's uh, to be brave enough also to, um, cause, uh, hearing what you said about fear, maybe fear of, uh, I think you said shining your light. So fear of, I have a fear of being seen, which is very strange because we want to be seen, but then we don't want to be seen. I don't know, maybe that's just me. So that's, I think, how this um, essence really resonates. Great. So thank you. That That's good. Um, and you're getting a little bit of a boost, aren't you, to um, let that deepest longing really be the way you move in the world. Lovely. Okay. Would one more of you like to do this? And we'll play with, with that. Another volunteer? Maybe you can just put your hand up if you want to. Oh, yes. Okay, Brenda. Great. Um, and I have your permission to. Um, explore this good i'll go back here and i'm going to close this a bit and just muscle test again so for brenda the wisdom that she needs is it in the single flowers is it in the raven kits ah it is okay here we go so is it in the kits now notice how i'm wording this is it in the kits from a to d no so that just eliminates it makes it a little simpler is it from f to l no 
Okay, is it um, the nature series, the peaceful warrior, the surround? It's the rose garden essences. Was, was it you, Brenda, who was asking about roses? Someone was asking about roses. So now we're in the beautiful rose garden kit. And um, the theme, the overall theme you can see from here is that the roses support the theme of love in the body. And this is one of the, there are five different kits that actually correspond to the chakra system. So um, for Brenda, it, does she need the red climber, Katsura rose, Rogrosa rose? No. Okay, we're coming down here. Othello, antique pink. All right. So this is this one. Um, these are the only. Um, essences that have a relationship component to them mother daughter or priestess and queen is an archetype here the maiden the celibate the hermit um, and then it focuses on the sixth chakra so the wisdom that you are working with right now um, Brenda I'm actually going to ask you to do something would you mind unmuting yourself and you read this definition and you can stop and say, that's what I needed to hear with any particular phrase that stands out to you. Would you mind doing that? No, I don't mind at all. So, um, I mean, I just want to say there are huge synchronicities here. <laughs> okay, we no. won't, we'd love to you hear more well stories, but we won't do that. I just. Mean, this Go ahead and read it aloud. It's lovely to hear your can voice. You, can, you hear my, can you hear me all right? Yes, we can. Antique Pink prepares us to host the creative fire of spirit by strengthening the energetic structures in our hearts, minds, and bodies. Well, that in itself resonates. Mm -hmm keeping us firmly rooted in our bodies and connected to source. The essence supports us as we develop our mature receptivity to spiritual energies and our intuitive capabilities. Helping us recognize and adjust easily any false perceptions or emotional blockages in our way. Antique Pink holds us in love's embrace as a spiritual intensity builds. By directing our attention to the burgeoning life within, antique pink affirms our path to inner freedom. Well, you could have just written that for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is, thank you very much. You've been, you've been lovely volunteers, I appreciate that. I'm going to stop the share for a moment and bring us back to um, uh, the oh. screen. And um, wow. would you just would you just affirm that I am on full, Brenda? You're on full. Yes, okay. You're on full. I'm going to I'm going to show you how to do muscle testing because this is the way that I use um, to find the essences. Pendul the use of the pendulum is excellent. Um, if, but I'm not going to go into that tonight. I personally find it a little bit slow to do that. So um, muscle testing is asking the body yes or no questions. And I'm going to just hold up a book that I have found really helpful for people. This is Meg Lundstrom's book, and it's called What to Do When You Can't Decide. Useful tools for finding the answers within. So though I'm going to give you just a really fast primer on how to do muscle testing, um, if you want to get into it more seriously, she has a lot of very practical grounded suggestions for questions, centering and, and um, making sure that you are doing, doing this in a really practical grounded way. It's the best book I've found on that. So, you take your non-dominant hand and join your thumb and little finger together. 
That creates an electrical circuit between two different muscle groups. If you joined your thumb and first finger together, you would be working in the same muscle group, which doesn't give you an ACDC component to the electrical circuit. Then you take your dominant hand, for me that's my right hand, and you make duck lips. See this, these duck lips here? By joining your thumb and second finger together. Then you're going to slip these through the bottom, up past your wrist, glide into there in between, and not so much that you're poking right through, I, I hope you can see this, and, but just, where, just past the fingernail so that you're going to be creating pressure on this circuit to open, spring open or hold tight. And you're using your duck lips to press out against that. So once they're in there, you take a breath, you get grounded and you say, give me a yes. And you gently push out and it should hold firm. Yes will stabilize the electrical circuit. It affirms, yes, this is good for me. Give me a no, and it will tend to spring open. Give me a yes, pause, ground yourself, give me a no. Now, that takes a bit of work, um, but it is, that is the simple way to um, do it. And with practice, it can be a marvelous tool. So, um, Another approach for testing would be to take the table of contents, which is seven pages of the 350 definitions. And you could put your, I'm just going to demonstrate with the manual here. You can put your hand on a whole page and say, is the essence on this page? I wouldn't go I wouldn't try to go, is it this one, is it this one, you'll drive yourself nuts. Is it on this page? Then you can act with your body like a pendulum and say, is it on this page? If it's, give me a yes, if your body's yes is this, which my body is right now, then I know it's on this page. If it's a no, see my no is sort of off to the right tonight, okay? Then I'll move on to the next page. When you come to a page that say, is it on this page? Yes. Then you can begin to drag your finger down. And I would suggest not using this finger, your second finger, because we do so much of this with our second finger. <laughs> but, but use your third finger, perhaps, and let it just drag down until it stops. And then take a look and see where you are. Mine is on the five elements essences. Okay? And then look that up. So that's for people who find the muscle testing really too challenging. It's another way. The reason why I suggest intuitive ways to um, ask about the essences for what you need is that it opens you to the mystery rather than coming from the left brain. I think I know what I need. It must be, I like roses, so I'll go and get the rose kit. And I want a heart chakra essence, so I'll choose this particular one. That deterministic approach keeps us locked in separation from nature. And my experience has been that the most marvelous thing that's happened for me is I've kept open for 20 years what would you tell me? What, do you, what would you have me do? What would you have me create? How is this to be used? Um, and the, that continued with the clients. What, what does this client need? Not what I think they need, but opening again to listen and allow something to emerge. Always what came was more soul satisfying and a deeper level of healing and possibility than I could have ever done from my small brain, my small bare brain. 
So that's why I encourage you to do this. There's a whole process of surrender, opening, listening that is marvelous for you um, to engage in. If you do prefer or want to augment that with a left brain approach, the, the manual has 60 pages at the end of it um, with words um, such as feeling or feminine or food or focus. I'm just jumping around there. And then the essences that relate to that, that you can look up. So it's not that I have ignored completely the left brain approach, but I think for, for the value of reconnecting with nature does take that we have to step back from that approach and open with a heart, uh, an approach with a, uh, an open heart, an open mind, a sense of playfulness, and let the mystery, let the mystery work us. So that's why the intuitive approach is really um, worth, worth doing. All right, at this point, um, what else did I want to share with you? Yes, I'll go back into the slide, sh back into the sharing of the, um, the store. And I'd like to just take you now to books. And this is where the manual itself is featured here. These are the two books I've written, Gaia's Invitation. That's another divinatory source in its own right. But here's the manual. And um, this is where you could download the table of contents here. If you didn't want to purchase the whole manual, you could just download this and all the lists of all the single essences, the kits, and the practitioner essences are there for you to use for testing. All right. The other thing that I wanted to point out to you is that there are times when you may feel um, that you actually want the essence that you've discovered. It feels so perfect. Well, you can test for yourself and say, is this what I actually need? Do I need to work with the essence over time? And, and if it's no, then relax and just trust that, that the information you have is sufficient to make a shift. When I began doing this, I, I was impressed that many practitioners started to use the definitions without any purchasing any essences. And they'd say, well, people are having these wonderful shifts and I print out the um, definitions and send them home with them. One man even would say to me, I told them to tuck it, the definitions under their pillow, just literally sleep on it. And I thought, that's really wacky, but okay if it works for them. <laughs> but I began to realize that because of the intimacy that I'd had with the plants, that deep listening respect, more came through the language than I had anticipated. All my focus was on the little blue bottles and what they did. But you can achieve a shift in consciousness just by reading the definitions. So if you did feel though that something was needed and you'd actually like to work with the energies of the essences, and this is not um, uh, this is not the evening where I'll talk about how the essences work. You could do go to consultations. And in the consultations, there's one particular one called the Flower Essence Selection Consultation. And in this, I work with you for a half an hour to tune in around your intention, what you need, what you feel you need, what timeline you're looking at. And I would do the testing for you be a witness to your process and make a selection of essences that I'd recommend. You would have the definitions and then you could see whether you actually felt like purchasing them. The other thing is making combinations for you 
uh, that's possible too. Sometimes um, people like to have a birthday essence. Or another one is an, your own um, emergency trauma solution, which is your um, the Raven Essence variation of a, a rescue remedy. But again, I would be testing from all 350 essences to make your particular personal one. So those are some options. One other consultation that I do do is, you see this practitioner consultation here. And this is um, for practitioners who want to have remedies to support their clients and they don't know what would really suit them. So I tune in on the practitioner and then I look at their creative field of their clientele and again, test and make recommendations based on that. So um, there's also the soul path consultation. That's another, another one for making something specific around where you're going um, in, 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 um, in your life path. So there are many ways that personal combinations can be made. Sometimes someone will call me and say, I'd like to make, I have doused and I would like you to make this combination for me or for my client and I will do that as well. So, but the purpose that we're looking at this tonight is just using the um, essences for their divinatory possibilities. I think at this point, what I'd like to do is open it up for any questions you have or comments. And I'll just stop the share from here and, and come back to the screen again. So. I'm not sure I understand. Whoops, that's Siri talking to me. No, she, <laughs> that's just all we needed. She didn't get it. I'm not surprised Siri didn't get it. <laughs> okay. So um, if you do have a question, why don't you unmute yourself and, and we, can, um, we can share that way. I'll put this back on full screen. Any questions, comments? I have one. Yes. Um, so the pink rose resonated on so many levels. Yes. So. I'm going to see you on Sunday and I would love it if you could bring me yes. that essence. And then in terms of um, the mode to use it, what, what do you recommend? What do you find is the... Okay, well, before we just do this, mm -hmm. um, we talk about that and that does get into working with an essence. Um, I would suggest and I didn't, I'm glad you brought this up. When you find a specific essence in a kit, it would be good for you to go back and look at what is the context of the rose essences altogether. Mm -hmm. For instance, I mentioned that they're about love in the body, but you may want to watch the slideshow. You may want to read mm -hmm. about how the essences were created. Mm -hmm. You may want to consider what um, look at the booklet and see how these essences can be used. So do in the kit, in the kit work when they come up. You find an individual essence in a kit. You want to understand its larger context. That really helps you to see the family that it comes out of, and then you can make a more informed decision about whether you want the rose with a single rose essence. Or because of the kind of work that you're involved in right now, you might choose the whole kit so that you could choose the range of love in the body and work with all your chakras. So do a little more research on your own. Okay, okay. Thank you. That makes sense. And if you if you get back to me and say, Andrea, would you please bring me the antique pink? I'll bring no, it. And I will. No, no, but I hear you. So go back and research in the manual. It, 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 right on yeah. that. Um, I'll just do a quick share and show you that. Thank you. 
So here we are in the Rose Garden Kit. Um, and uh, there is a slideshow that you could click on here and watch that. Um, but here's the booklet that goes with it. And you'll see the story of how they were created. You'll see how they work, uh, the different areas that they work on, and, um, and how to use the entire kit. The kits are like mini workshops in a box. Then you'll see all the definitions for all of them. And is there more at the end? General information about working with essences. So that takes a little bit of work on your part, but I think it could be very helpful for you to have that, Brenda, um, knowledge, the context, as well as the individual one. Okay? Okay. Um, anybody else? Question or comment? I don't have a question. I have an interesting comment uh, before um, the webinar was to be. I went into your website and I was milling about and I thought, okay, I just opened and said, what do I possibly need? And so interesting, I just want to comment on what it is because you tuned into Reality Shift Essences uh, set one and it was the honoring our deepest longing. And I got, this seems very partnered, this is why I'm bringing it up, Reality Shift Essences set two, acceptance of the now. Beautiful, beautiful. So um, actually I do have a question then because when I look it up, do I, I don't see a breakdown of, as you were saying, look at what's within each combination. Like, does it matter? Like, I don't know. I just, I find it really interesting. Like what essences are a part of this? Okay, we'll find that out. Um, okay, I need to uh, get out of this. We'll go back here. Rose Garden Essences, and we'll go into the Practitioner Essences, the Reality Shift Part 2, and Acceptance of the Now. Here they are. Creating Relationships, which is a big combination. Calling forth the Vital Life Force from the Peaceful Warrior Kit. Stillness in the Void from the Destiny Kit and the perennial mix. Okay, so they're all combos within the combo. That's right. So yes. as I said, this particular essence may have 80 single essences in it. Yeah. Okay. I will go and peruse. Well, you. you know, at this, at this point, it becomes so alchemical that, um, when 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 you take a, a different intention each time and choose from this variety of all these different possible essences, what comes up is is absolutely unique. And um, and I don't try to try to break it all back down, but some some people do enjoy reading what the perennial mix is, what the stillness is, to give them more. Um, insight into the nature of that but i take those when i this is how i come up with a new definition i look at all of those and and ascertain what they are saying in a whole complex manner but that's another story um <laughs> okay thank you i'm glad you brought that up diane do you have any um questions yeah or just question comment um I knew that when, and you can probably barely see me, but I'm here. Um, yes. yeah. Appreciate this session. I, I knew that when I saw the invitation, I just knew it was time to tune in. And interesting, that is kind of a side thing that I'm getting now is 
I keyed in on practitioner consultations. I mean, I've seen your website. I feel like I've got a new look of it. Number one, I'm excited about the muscle testing. Number two, and I recently have made a declaration to myself that I want to go ahead and pursue the fact that I'm a Reiki practitioner. Animals, people, remote, on site, I've there's just been some things happening lately kind of pointing me there. And I'm just wondering if there's an opportunity for some intersection here with us. Uh, but I know that holistic practitioner could mean many different things. I mean, and I just wonder, would that fall within the domain of a holistic practitioner, Reiki? Yes, it, it could. And um, it, it also might be that you don't need the actual essences. I mean, I would be delighted to do that with you. But here's right. another thing. I use the um, definitions when I have um, done a private consultation with a person on the phone or in person. And I'll, um, at the end of the session, I will test for what essence mirrors what we have been doing together. So, you know, here we have two people in consultation, and then I step back to give nature a chance to say what it would say about what we've done. And I just had a remarkable one with a client earlier this afternoon, and we did that stepping back, and it was like we both were witnessed, not just her, but both what we had created was now seen and acknowledged by nature through the definition that came up. I do this sometimes with groups when I'm, we've done a women's circle. I'll say, let's see at the end what we have created. And it gives voice to nature right in the moment. Um, when a woman's here in private retreat, we will test for essences periodically to witness the progress of what's happening over two or three days. So you can use, Diane, you can use the essences that way for instance, if you're going to do Reiki on a cat, what is it that I need to see that would help me work with this cat? Or what is this cat trying to say to me through, through its body? Can I use the test? You could ask, can I get the information through the essence definitions? Do I actually need the, the essence? So I, I love that for me, what this has done, is I'm not locked into having to sell a product, but the product has an overtone of the language that can be create shifts in consciousness without being locked into just the physical essence. And that yet there can be the interplay of both. So does that answer that for you? Does it open some more possibility? But the other is yes, if you do get that a practitioner essence session would be fine, I'd love to do that with you. And there's no charge for practitioners doing that. Wow, well then the answers are yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> so thank you, I feel like Wonderful. there's new Wonderful. possibilities open, thanks. Well, I think we've covered the, the basis tonight and um, I so appreciate those of you that had a chance to turn up and I know there are many others who are looking forward to the recording. So I trust we've covered things enough for everybody to find their own points of entry. Um, and I just deeply, deeply appreciate what we've been able to do together. Shall we conclude with testing to see what we have accomplished tonight? Um, yes. What, this is sec, uh, no, cancel that, I don't want to do that. I'm going to go back to the share. Um, open this up again. And uh, just close that a little bit and test. So we are witnessing what we have accomplished this evening. And is it in the single flower, the kits? No, it's in the practitioner essences. Is it in the first five? No. The reality shifts? No. Rebirth of soul, no. Somatech, no. Verve essences, oh, well, this is fun. 
I made these essences for a hair salon. Can you believe this? <laughs> and um, in, in maple. And I knew I needed to come up with something very simple. So I used the analogy of a stoplight with green, yellow, and red. So um, is it the stepping out, the starting over? Time out for love is what we've got. Okay, let's see what this says. So this is the red light one. And um, that was the image that I had for this. Reconnecting with the natural rhythms of life recharges our batteries. Stopping to care for ourselves in the midst of many external demands is a profoundly holy act. In these breaks from our regular routine, we, re we connect our head with our heart and our body with our spirit. Helping us tune into aspects we have abandoned or ignored, time out for love encourages it us to make it a priority to nurture ourselves and welcome life's fluid energy moving in us again. Tapping into an oasis of self-love is the basis of authentic generosity within healthy relationships. I never would have guessed that would be the one that would come up. So how delightful. And I thank all of you for a wonderful evening. It has been very precious to be with all of you. So I wish you all fun and pleasure as you enjoy this resource. And there's a cat that is <laughs> enjoying it too. Thank you all and good night. Thank you.